Hey what's up people, I was surfing the web the other night right, and I came across some pretty disturbing topics, human experimentation, so I hope you guys are ready for the 10 most inhumane experiments ever conducted. The early 1970s was a time when many gay men came out and identified themselves as homosexuals at government sponsored health clinics. By the mid 1970s, the government became very interested in the health of gay men, but more specifically, in the sexual transmission of the hepatitis B virus in homosexuals. So from 1978 to 1981, the experimental hepatitis B vaccine was injected into gay men in New York and San Francisco. Then all of a sudden, HIV appeared in the United States. Coincidence? I think not. Before 1978, there wasn't any blood stored that tested positive for HIV, nor were there any cases of AIDS. The first case of AIDS appeared shortly after the experiments in Manhattan, and by June 1981, the epidemic became official and was labeled as the gay disease known as AIDS. By 1980, before AIDS became officially an epidemic, 20% of the gay men who volunteered for the hepatitis B vaccine in Manhattan were discovered to be HIV positive. This is crazy, because it meant that gay men in Manhattan alone had the highest incidence of HIV anywhere in the world, including Africa, the supposed birthplace of HIV and AIDS. Also, keep in mind that before any of the men were given the vaccine, they were in perfect health. That was one of the requirements to be part of the experiment. So yeah. HIV was introduced to the states via vaccine, and for years, the gay community was blamed for it. In the early 1940s, during Stalin's reign, there was a top secret program known as the camera, which means the chamber in Russian. Their sole purpose was to create an orderless and tasteless poison that was undetectable after death. The chamber would experiment on prisoners from the gulags who were convicted for engaging in anti-Soviet propaganda. The prisoners would be given food, medicine, or injections that were secretly laced with poison. One report describes their first victim as a healthy strongman who rushed about the cell as his stomach pains worsened. He ran to the steel door, blood pouring from his eyes and beating the door with his hands and feet until he was completely still. Other reports show how at times the poison would not kill the prisoners, so they often nursed them back to health and tried again until they had been killed. There were no survivors for this experiment. The Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment was a US government funded program which lasted for 40 years, from 1932 to 1972. The experiment took place in one of the poorest counties in Alabama, and the 399 black men who were to be infected with syphilis were only told that they were being treated for bad blood. After they had all been infected, they were deliberately left to suffer the venereal disease. The public health service who led the program did not let the infected men be treated by any means, even when the cure had been discovered in the 1940s. They were deliberately denied the medication, and when 250 of the infected men registered for the draft for World War II, they were told to get treated for their syphilis. But then, the public health service exempted them from being drafted. By the end of the experiment, 28 men had died directly of syphilis, 100 died from related complications, 40 of their wives had been infected, and 19 of their children were born with congenital syphilis. The study was meant to discover how syphilis affected blacks as opposed to whites, but this knowledge would not have changed the clinical treatment of syphilis in any way, so in the end, they were just torturing these people. Another US government funded program similar to the Tuskegee study is the Watermelon STD experiment that lasted from 1946 to 1948. The initial intent of the study was to look for new ways to prevent STDs including gonorrhea, chancroids, and syphilis. They had about 1,500 deliberately infected subjects, but branched out to about 5,000 watermelons by the year 1953, and they were all unaware of the experiment. The subjects included Guatemalan prisoners, sex workers, soldiers, children, and psychiatric patients. The way they infected their subjects were by normal means like having a prisoner have sex with an infected sex worker or by directly infecting them with an infection into the penis, rectum, eyes, or urethra. That just sounds terrible. The Watermelon Experiment was a largely unknown event in the US until the early 2000s and was ethically concerning because it was done to a vulnerable population. In other words, to a population that has difficulty accessing healthcare services. The US is kinda shady, isn't it? 
In 1939, Wendell Johnson and Mary Tudor conducted a stuttering experiment on 22 orphan children and was dubbed the Monster Study. The purpose for the experiment was to figure out whether or not stuttering is genetic or can be caused. They split the 22 children into two groups, the first being normal speakers and the second the stutterers. The only thing was, only half of the children in the stutterer group showed actual signs of stuttering, the other half spoke normally. Johnson and Tudor began their speech therapy next and would praise the first group of normal speakers, complimenting them on their speech. But to the stutterer group, they were criticized harshly for every mistake and were convinced that they were stutterers. This lasted for nearly five months. By the end of it, the orphan children who received negative therapy in the experiment suffered negative psychological effects. So much that the normal speakers in that group began to stutter while the stutterers worsened. Mary Tudor did go back to help reverse the effects of the experiment, but to no avail. On March 1st, 1954, the United States tested their first dry hydrogen bomb at Bikini Atoll, Marshall Islands. The blast was much larger than they expected, and unfortunately, the native people of Marshall Islands were exposed to radioactive fallout. Instead of issuing an evacuation, they waited six days and decided to add a new research section to the nuclear weapons effects titled, Study of Response of Human Beings Accidentally Exposed to Significant Fallout Radiation or known as Project 4.1. Most of the individuals exposed did not show immediate signs of radiation sickness, but within a few days, effects of significant radiation exposure manifested, such as the loss of hair and skin damage. Over the next few decades, the United States would annually check up on the islanders, and as you can expect, effects to the population were undeniable. In the first five years after the exposure, miscarriages and stillbirths doubled. Then, in the decades that followed, children began to suffer from thyroid cancer, and not only that, a third of the people exposed to the radiation in 1954 developed neoplasms by 1974. Some people even believe that the radiation exposure to the islanders was planned before the bomb was detonated. This just keeps making the US look even shadier. During the long years of racial segregation in South Africa, there was a secret experiment going on in the South African Defense Force called the Aversion Project. The project would conduct extensive psychiatric abuse towards homosexuals in an attempt to change their sexual preference. According to reports, for about two decades, homosexuals from both sexes were taken from their military ranks and subjugated to crude electric shock therapy. Male subjects were shown photos of men to arouse them, but then were given an electric shock shocked followed by pictures of nude women. When the shock therapy failed to change their sexual preference, they were forced to undergo a sex change operation. Reports show that possibly 900 sex change operations were carried out under the guidance of the South African Defense Force. Once the operation was completed, the subjects were discharged from the military service, their birth certificates were changed, and they were given new identity papers. Some were even discharged before the sex change was fully completed, leaving them in a state of limbo. The purpose of the Stanford Prison Experiment was to study the psychological effects of becoming a prisoner or prison guard. They gathered 24 male college students and had them flip a coin to determine which role they would take. Immediately from the start of the experiment, the prisoners were made to feel humiliated and emasculated, having them searched, stripped naked, made to wear a dress with no underpants on, and wore a chain on their foot to remind them that they are oppressed. The guards were given no specific training on how to be guards, instead they were free to do whatever they thought was necessary to maintain law and within a few days everyone was fully immersed into their role. One prisoner left in less than 36 hours after suffering acute emotional disturbance and became very aggressive, while many other prisoners experienced mental breakdowns. After only six days, the experiment was called off because the guards were progressively treating the fake prisoners worse and worse. At night, when they thought no one was watching, their boredom drove them to do even more pornographic and degrading abuse towards the prisoners. In the end, the prisoners felt like they were dehumanized and most of the guards became very sadistic. Despite how terrible this experiment was, it actually proves the fact of how power can change people. During World War II, German doctors conducted a number of deadly experiments on the concentration camp workers. They would keep prisoners in tanks filled with cold water for hours, or they were forced to stand out naked in freezing low temperatures in order for them to contract hypothermia, so that after, they could attempt to treat them. One of the most notorious doctors was Joseph Mengele, who injected chemicals into prisoners' eyes to see if their eye color would change. Another one of his disturbing experiments was sewing up twins together, trying to create 
create conjoined twins. He experimented on more than a thousand twins, but only 200 survived. Seven-year-old Jacqueline along with these two boys were victims of tuberculosis medical experiments. They were murdered shortly before liberation. During the Shino-Japanese Wars in World War II, the Imperial Japanese Army performed human experimentation in a facility known as Unit 731. Unit 731 performed many gruesome activities, including vivisection, germ warfare, frostbite testing, syphilis, rape, forced pregnancies, weapon testing, starvation, and many more types of experiments. If you don't know what vivisection is, well, Japanese scientists and doctors would inject prisoners with various diseases, and after a period of time, would cut them open while still alive and without anesthesia. They often removed organs to study the disease's progression, amputated limbs and then reattached them to the opposite side of the body, and experimented how the body reacts when parts of the brain, liver, lungs, and heart are removed from the body. Female prisoners were often raped and forcibly impregnated for experiments such as transmission of disease from mother to child, fetal survival outside the womb, and how much genitalia damage the women could survive. The worst part of all of this is that nearly everyone in Unit 731 got away scot-free. The United States granted them immunity in exchange for all of their research. Again, <laughs> the US is pretty damn shady. That's the video you guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to watch the previous video, make sure to click that annotation on the screen. If you are on a mobile device, click the little eye on the top right of your screen. It's like a little white eye. If you are new, click that subscribe button and stick around. There's going to be plenty of videos you're going to want to see. But thank you guys for watching. Until then, I'll check you guys out on the next one.